So as an executive coach, I help people manage tough conversations in their lives, relationships, and careers. And on the career aspect, one of my specialties is salary negotiation, uh, interviewing well, just to get the offer. And so I know we're talking about kind of more of that top of funnel, how to get the job in a remote sense. Uh, managing all those conversations is something I really pride myself on and enjoy doing, which is why I left corporate America several years ago to be a coach full time and leverage my skill set and experience, having five different careers working across Fortune 500 marquee tech companies and small business to help you win. Yeah, we saw in the wake of what happened in 2020 explode the, you know, the, the permission to be remote. And then now in the last 12 months, you start to hear all the large technology companies and the large Fortune 500 start to do the saber rattling of it's time to come back to office. So much so that even has its own acronym, RTO, return to office. And you're starting to see in job postings, things like that, that this is a hybrid role. So that's the kind of language you're starting to see. And there really is kind of a why in the road forming. Companies that say you need to be in the office either partially, those are the hybrid roles, or in absolution. I just had a job offer negotiation client today accept an offer at a Series D startup in the Bay, and they're five days a week in office. So just like the old days, right? Um, The other why in the road, though, is companies that are saying, no, we're still remote first, and they kind of pride themselves, their culture, uh, and they're kind of the the employee benefit, the employee experience on the fact that you get to be remote. So I'd say there's going to be a continue continued bifurcation, all the big companies that want people to come back in the office, they're going to go from three to five days in my estimation uh, over the next year or two and really just try and bring people in. Uh, and then the companies that say we're remote first, they'll use that as a differentiator to, to recruit talent. I've noticed that too. I've been on a job search recently. I mentioned the pre-show. I, I, I almost had a scare. So I'm starting with a new client on Monday and they said, hey, can we push it back 90 days? I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's going to work. And they just clarified, no, no, no. Can we just put it, push it back another week? Because I'm actually going to the States here this week to meet in person, start getting onboarding stuff, pick up my laptop and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, I- I'm still going to be there. Like, do you need me to come in? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, 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 we messed up. It's it's actually uh, this month that we want you to start, not not three months out. I'm like, who? But I have noticed on the job search one because um, I live remotely full time. I live in Mexico City, so a lot of companies I've seen that they're more hesitant for those types of things. I lead the conversation with that with the initial phone screen with the recruiter that hey, I live in Mexico City. Um, everything is paid through my home state, and I've never had any issues. I've only had issues with one company in my career with that. But I always lead with that to make sure that we don't waste our time going through the interview cycle and have that issue come up. Um, I've also noticed, like you said, a lot of newer, usually earlier stage tech type startups. And I think it's because of just an expense type thing that they do pride themselves on the remote first type thing. They're a little more flexible. But I've noticed that the salaries for remote positions seem like they're a bit suppressed as compared to years past when when there was just jobs abundant in the market. I remember in 2021, I think about this time that year, I started a job search on Monday and by Friday I had two full-time offers and it was, it was actually quite nice. So can you comment on how has the demand for remote positions or just work in general evolved in these recent years? Yeah, it's a great question. And so there's two layers to that and you kind of touched on both, which is the, just the macro economic employment picture from 2020, especially 2021, you know, with the stock market ripping and uh, job offers and job placement going to really what was kind of a parabolic high. And then, you know, Facebook was kind of the one that popped the bubble of tech, uh, the tech bubble on unemployment by doing their first layoff. And what was it, you know, first quarter of 2022. So that was the beginning of what we're seeing now, which is more company layoffs um, and just shedding workforce. And then companies being really slow and very intentional about bringing people on board. So basically it's the macroeconomic picture is jobs are harder to find and harder to get, but they're not impossible. You know, companies are still growing. There's still innovation out there and there's still opportunities for you. It's just going to mean that will you get two offers in two days uh, after starting a company, uh, starting one job, it's, you know, m- not going to be as likely, but nothing's impossible. And then the second layer is on the the fact that remote work, you know, some companies, like I said, depends on their philosophy. Uh, the big companies want people to come back in the office, as we said. And, you know, as a former compensation consultant uh, for these big companies, the whole lens is geography based pay. So if you're um, 
you know, in California looking for jobs and in 2020, you bounced to Georgia because you want some country living. Now the companies are starting to say, hey, if you're going to remain there, then we're going to pay you to a localized salary uh, based on that market data. And so the remote job is partially driven by where you are. And when, when you said, hey, these remote jobs seem to be, they're paid less. Um, now you could be at a New York or a, excuse me, a San Francisco company and decide to move to New York and you're still technically remote, but you may not take as much of a hit because New York is just as a competitive a geography from a compensation standpoint as San Francisco. In fact, those are the top two cities in the entire United States. Every other city is below them from a compensation geography philosophy. So you just have to understand where you're at and then where your company's uh, localized nexus is from their compensation philosophy, where that headquarters is uh, in determining, is this going to impact me? So one anecdote is Spotify in the wake of all the remote work happening in 2021 and 2022 said, we're going to pay all of our employees who are remote, basically everyone in the company, the same as if they were in San Francisco. That's pretty cool for an employee. It's expensive for a company. And a lot of companies probably won't do that just to be you know, realistic about it. But there are companies that do have certain distinct compensation philosophies. So those are the ones you want to target if you're going to be a remote employee so that you can get maximize your earnings and also minimize your expenses based on where you live or at least enjoy the lifestyle that you want.